whenever you're involved in criminality, there are two things, and not to get too technical, but there's the act and then there's the mental state, right? So you call it mens rea, which is what is your mindset? And then you can't only possess a mind because the mind just tells the intent you're formed to commit a crime. There has to be some act in furtherance of the crime. And so here was the legal issue. The legal issue is that mere preparation is never enough. And so there was an, a ton of preparation that we see, we see that he did here. The, 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 the Absolutely. The devices exploding. The, in a dry he had run. guns in his home. Yeah. He was, right, exploding devices. But. If you don't take a substantial step towards the actual commission of the offense, it's not a crime. And so the judge said that based upon mere preparation, there was no act in furtherance. There may have been a lot of plotting and planning, but there was no actual attempt specifically to carry it out. The judge said that it does not constitute a crime. That then went to the appellate court, and the appellate court agreed that it wasn't enough to constitute a crime. And so the prosecutor was in the position of, where do we go now? And what they did was they opted to enter into that plea deal. Now, they entered into that plea deal because, uh, you know, the logic is whenever you're treated, for example, as a juvenile, he's 17, as opposed to an adult, the focus is on rehabilitation. When you're an adult, the focus is on punishment. So if they would have went forward in terms of an adult perspective, he may not have gotten treatment for his ailments in prison, whereas a juvenile, you get such treatment. So and that's the analysis. if the payment is made and he is sent to this facility, as Wayne pointed out, in Georgia for for this 10 years of therapy for autism spectrum disorder. I mean, I'm left wondering, how do we know after 10 years, if you have an intent, finish my Whether sentence, Jeff Gardier. Yeah. Well, exactly, and if we're talking about an autism spectrum disorder, we're not talking about something that we know of right now that is curable. So I think they were using the autism spec uh, spectrum disorder, one of the issues that he had, in addition to a delusional uh, personality issue, he himself even said, I know I've got psychiatric problems. I think I may be a sociopath. So this is a person who doesn't have a conscience, but is smart enough to understand that there's something that's wrong. And I think what the prosecutors perhaps saw here was there was a chance of saving this individual because of his psychological state of mind. It wasn't that he was just a bad egg. Uh, it wasn't that it was just bad wiring in his brain. They knew that his parents were very committed to his upbringing, that he came from a good home, and that this was a person like we have many young people who have these psychological issues and don't get the help and some of them act out but if you could get to this guy you know while he's young and you can help him and what we've seen is that he didn't act out he had the rehabilitation okay. and so they'll keep him in treatment not for the autism spectrum disorder maybe that was for legal uh, uh situation sure. but for more of the personality the disorder yeah. exactly yeah. to make yeah. sure that he won't act out and by the way people with autism spectrum disorders there is no link towards yeah, criminality no. or violence and we should no. say that no.